Hey, Teresa with Sippy Couture again. Um, so I have a few tumblers that I'm working on today and it's uh, kind of like a white wash wood look. And I think it just comes out so pretty. You can put any decal over it um, and it kind of leaves like a soft uh, look to it. I'm gonna go ahead and do as much of this as I can as a full, um, a full tutorial for you guys. The tumbler that I have that I'm working on is already prepped. Um, oh look, I'm probably have to fix that. Um, but this is one that I did. It's already prepped, so there's no prep steps to show you guys, and washing is just soap and water. So we're going to get right to it. I hope you guys enjoy this video and um, this tutorial, and I hope it helps you guys come up with something, because, I mean, it, I just, it looks cool. I like it. It looks cool. Here we go. All right, guys, so this is really simple. We're going to get right to it, um, try to see if we can help you. Uh, excuse I'm all over the place. I'm kind of not used to working right here. I do it over at my other... Um, not station, but my other spot. So I'm trying to find my bearings where I put my stuff right now. So this is how I always mark my tumblers. I want a straight line and I'm going to put several straight lines going around the cup. So I always use my lid. A lot of the lids have that center line from where the lid was made and it's on both sides, the front and back. So if you're doing a split tumbler, you can use the, um, just pop it off and use the lid. Hopefully you can see that. Nope. Don't know how to do this. Um, hopefully you can see right there, a line in the back and just a line right here from where, there we go, you can see right there, from where it was made. So we're going to pop the lid on just to give me a little idea of where this first line is going to go. So I'm just going to mark it a little and then I'm going to use a ruler for the rest of it. I kind of played around for a minute to see what size I wanted and I had the thought of doing um, painter's tape and just moving it each time. but I don't know, I didn't like the width of them. So this is a 30 ounce prep skinny tumbler from Hog. Um, Y'all, these are so great. They're sanded and ready to go. I just um, wipe them off, you know, take them to the sink, wash them down with Dawn dish soap, and then spray painted it white. This is just a flat white spray paint. So what I'm gonna do is this is my center line, right? I'm gonna use my ruler and just stand it up so that I know it's straight. I'm try to do this. I kind of have this looking at my shoulder. I'm try to do this straight. So I'm going to scoot it over a little. Like I said, I couldn't quite figure out the size that I wanted, but I found out that if I scoot it over a little, um, it could pretty much equal out and go, up, go around the cup. So I'm just going to take that and take your time and just get your pencil and go straight down. Now these lines, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of make them somewhat darker. Uh, I tried going in with the other one that I did and just freehanded some of those lines at the end to kind of give it more of a pop, but... I don't, not that steady. So we're gonna do it like this. And I'm not really applying the same pressure all the way down the cup. I'm gonna do some spots lighter and some spots just a little darker. So see, I'm going off the line a little. Kind of give myself another one. We're gonna do this all the way around the cup. Like I said, take your time because if you kind of go too hard, it's gonna go sideways like that. It's gonna get a lot of paint over it. So I'm not completely worried about it, but if it went all zigzag, I would um, I'd try to erase it and redo it. Should we have to get one more in? All right, so there's my lines around the cup. Like I said, I'm not too worried about that spacing. It's gonna get decals on both sides of it. So um, that's fine with me. So one thing I noticed when I did the other one is that I like having some um, kind of dirtiness to the background, but when I tried to do it just with a pencil and like kind of create those lines, um, I wasn't good at it at all. So I'm gonna take just this eraser. No idea what type it is or what my boys decided to do. Um, erase. I should watch how I say that, huh? Um, I don't know. Take an eraser. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can give myself just some dirtiness around it. That one came out too close, I think. Oh, that's right. I'm going to kind of erase some of these lines so that they're kind of smudgy in some areas. 
that way you don't see just straight pencil marks but I do want to leave some like that kind of had the thought of getting a water slide and just you know cheating and did one well, I don't know if it's cheating right I just doing a water slide but I really wanted to see if I could kind of do one by hand instead and I end up really liking the way that other one came out see if I can I hate this I don't like doing this <laughs> I uh I don't know I hate my handwriting so anytime it comes to, like writing my own stuff on anything like art I don't know I feel like I don't know, just get scared I feel like it doesn't work all right let's try to write some of these in Kind of doing this to you know have it a little more dirty that way when I go to put the paint on like there's a bit of detail to the background of it and I feel like I won't have to take my pencil and try to make pretty lines later because I don't know I don't want it added on top I kind of want it to be like from the back of it all right so I'm going to go through and kind of where there's nothing I'll um put a little more of something Ooh. I have to use a lot of paint on that part. This pencil eraser does a much better job than this one in my hand. So if I see anything I definitely want to erase, I'll use that one. I want to try to avoid as much as I can having to do fresh lines because just not all right I think that's it I'm pretty sure the rest well I'm not pretty sure I know the rest of the um of it can be worked in with this gray paint that I have. All right, let's get rid of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on uh, my sponge. Uh, it's nasty, but it works. It's a high density foam. I uh, got it from, where did I get it from? Joann's. And it come, you can get it, man, as big as a sheet as you want, um, or big of a pad as you want, I don't really know. But we just got a big one and then we trim it down and it works so good because you can ha you can make it out to whatever size you want. Uh, so I have a few pieces that like that will fit on pretty much everything except for, well, obviously too big for like mug and wine. But good for everything else. All right. So this is a paint that I have. I have some acrylic gesso. I'm guessing. Gessoing. That's how it's I'm such a nerd. <laughs> Guessing that's how it's pronounced. That's what I have. And I really like this stuff because it's like, it has a really chalky feel to it once it dries. Um, and I kind of like that. So we're going to do that. I'm going to mix a little. Oops, uh, a little of that with some. So I'll just pop back up. That thing's nasty. Put some gray. I'm gonna play with this um, and see what color it comes out to be, and see if I want to add any more. I don't. I know I don't want it dark, um, but um, I don't know exactly how much I'm putting it in either. I mean, it's easy enough to change the color as we get going. And then that's kind of one of the third colors I'm doing. I have this really, really pretty metallic white. I just love this stuff. Um, it's disgusting. 
Oh God, you guys, sorry. Um, I love that stuff. It's so pretty. Under epoxy, I feel like white under epoxy is pretty-ish, but that, I don't know, it just gives it a shine that I just love so much. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with this white, just the regular white. Um, ideally, I would like a thicker brush, but um, <laughs> it completely fell to shit a few minutes ago when I tried doing the other tumbler. Like I was picking, look, there's a piece of right there. I was, I on my pants. I was wiping that off of my cup like forever. All right, so I'm just gonna go through, um, sorry, wiping the bristles off my cup. Oh, my half sentences. So I'm gonna make these lines like super, super messy and I'm just getting it on there. I don't want it completely thick. It's gonna be easier to add more as we go. I definitely don't wanna overdo it right now. Hopefully I'm doing this in the right way. Um, so I'm not too worried about being uh, light right now because I'm just gonna keep adding and layering. That way I can get kind of as much detail as I want. Another thing I like with that paint is that as it dries it kind of like gives this um i'll try to show it to you i don't know it's like chalky looking so like as it builds up in some areas it's like almost like a textured look what i think could be just so pretty considering this is like a shiplap ish um I don't know if it, not really shiplap white wood i don't know what this would be I'll ask. I'll ask that way I know what to name this thing. All right, we're gonna keep going all the way around the cup and get that first layer of white. I'm kind of turning my paintbrush in different areas. That way some spots fall thick like that and some spots are a little more spread out. And I don't really want to see too much of the white of the cup. Um, that's initial spray paint that we did. I really don't want to see too much of that. I'd rather have some of these other colors. It's fine if it peeks through, but I definitely don't want any big old spots Ooh, showing that. Okay, so that was a mistake. Don't go sideways, guys. All right, so I have that on. Um, usually it's, well, it's always best to let your paint dry a bit before you go in with your next paint, especially with acrylics. If you're trying to um, paint and you're like layering your acrylics, as your paint dries, the next um, wet set of acrylic paint is just going to wipe it away. So um, be a lot more patient than I am and let it dry. <laughs> Zero patience, y'all. I have like none. Okay, so this ends up being just this really light, pretty gray. I'm going to get this in and then I'm going to bring in some of that metallic white with it. I'm gonna have to break that streak up. And I don't wanna go too much onto that, um, you know, the pencil lines. There's some spots that I'm covering up and some spots I wanna leave out. Like I said, I'm really not that great at leaving, I mean, going back and making accent lines with that. So um, my hand's just not steady. I think the more I can leave it alone, the better for me. All right, so bring in some of that metallic. It's really hard to see when it's mixed in with all this stuff, but once it's under that epoxy, it really is pretty. I feel like I'm still seeing flakes with other paintbrush. I 
That thing was a mess. <laughs> All right, so I am going to make myself leave this alone. Um, that way I'm not kind of wiping off any of this paint. And then I'll come back and we'll do, you know, another layer of everything kind of going around again to get it uh, to the, you know, kind of the, what we want, what we want it to look like. So that's where we are right now. Um, that is too dark. Big, ugly, stupid line. All right, walking away now. And we'll be back with some more. All right, so this is about as dry as I have patience for. Um, and I know I said I'm not gonna go back in with a pencil and do some of these lines, cause my, I don't, I'm not steady. Um, I think I changed my mind, but I also think that's a bad idea. Eee, see, look, crooked. I don't know, we'll try doing a few. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't be doing that. Let me just do five more. some of this. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> That's horrible. Don't do that. All right, so I'm gonna go back in with some of these whites and grays. I really wish I had that other paintbrush, man. It would look so much better. I just like those bigger brush strokes. All right, so at this point, um, I don't really have a plan on what paint I'm grabbing. I'm just kind of mixing all. You can kind of see as some of this is starting to layer. Let's see if I can show this to you. As some of it's starting to layer. How, how do I do this, guys? You see how it's like, you can see the streaks of it. And um, I showed my husband and I was like, what would you call this? White wood, shiplap, and he was like wood panel. And now I just feel like I'm making something super trashy. <laughs> oh. So this is probably where um, knowing when to walk away will be a good thing. But if you've seen any of my videos, I think I've told y'all like five times, like, I'll be back. Or I'm leaving it alone. Or I'm done. And I, then I was like, yeah, I lied. All right. So the part that I'm on right now, you see how like right there, you can see where there's much not any paint I'm just trying to make sure I have it all the way down because the decal is going to go centered and then a name on the other side but I really don't want to like forget the ends like the bottom and top parts of the tumbler so we're going to make sure all those are kind of worked in and then I may or may not be finished And I'm putting them in between the lines now. Um, those initial like big old lines we did down it and kind of going in between that. Or at least I'm trying to.
Okay. I think that's it. Try to make sure this paint at the top is kind of going towards the inside of the cup. That way, if when it starts to dry as I pull it off, it doesn't like peel the paint back. You know, kind of pulls it over. And this top part, you don't have, well, for me, I'm not going to be super picky with that because when I'm done, the tumbler, where's my napkin? When I'm done this whole tumbler um, and the first layer of epoxy, I'm gonna go through with the sand, uh, with the sanding sponge and I'll show you guys all that. And I'm gonna take off the epoxy right around the rim. That way when I do that final layer, I'll have a really good seal. So I think that's layered enough. Now I'm going to leave it alone. All right, done. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this alone now because I think if I go any more, I'm just gonna mess it up. So we're gonna let that be. Oh, look, you can see some of the shine from the um from that metallic that's in there. Like it's seriously so pretty guys, I'm excited. All right, we're gonna let this dry all the way and then we'll get to epoxy. All right, so remember that time two minutes ago when I said I was done, um, I lied. I went to go touch up this other tumbler that I was working on and um, I grabbed just the metallic white and when I went to go lay it in, it kind of gripped some of the raised parts of the layers of paint that were under it and it looks really cool it gave like this cool little effect and it's like almost just those few if you can see it look there's one right there if you see this when it turns it's kind of like a few spots just shine and catch the light um and i thought that was really cool so we're gonna add some of that and then if i listen to me i'm done and we're gonna stagger them that way it's not straight lines just in one spot they're not too close I'll do my arm out the way for you guys i guess all right, so y'all gonna have to let me know how I did. Did I actually stay in the camera this time? I feel like I didn't check, but I also feel like I wasn't moving in circles. It's actually my first time not um, holding a tumbler like that or like on my knee while I was working on it with painting, so. That's, I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, I've been doing these for maybe three years. Don't know. That piece came out too thick. All right. Probably would have been a better idea to clean off my brush in between. That would be, it would be a little, a little more spready. I knew when I was getting ready to say that that it wouldn't make sense, but let's just go with it. All right, so Kind of makes me wonder if my husband's across the room thinking, yeah, why is a retard? <laughs> why do you say that stuff? All right, so obviously I lost track and I started dipping in both <laughs> colors. 
Um, but I'm definitely stopping. Go back with my plan of just adding in the bit of that. It's almost like you can see that stuff better when you turn it. Maybe I should do that. All right, try not to get lost here. Oh yeah, there's some good ones on this side. I mean, it kind of looks cool. It looks like really shiny, pretty floors. I wonder if I could do this to my floors and then <laughs> epoxy over it. It'd be a bad idea. It'd be a horrible idea. I'm not doing it. Besides the fact that my husband killing me, I'm not doing it. All right, that's it. Promise, I'm stopping, I'm done. So I'm gonna set this to completely dry um, and then get some quick coat epoxy on it. All right, I have my epoxy mixed. Um, it is stone coat, quick coat um, epoxy. It's a one to one ratio. Just mix it up real quick. And this is the, um, I just put it on the tumbler. I forgot what I was gonna say. I completely lost myself. Oh. Um, how much I used. I don't know. Uh, I have a whole set of cups that I'm working on today. So I don't know how much epoxy I mix because I kind of run through and do them all at the same time. And my, I made sure this was completely dry before I went ahead with this. I didn't seal it. Um, I don't feel the need to seal it with these paints. They don't go anywhere for me. Uh, so I just you know, let them dry completely and came straight to the turners. And I like working through my epoxy a lot. That way, I feel like it helps those bubbles kind of move their, move themselves to the top. And I don't want it to be too thick, so I'm kind of just making sure it's all laying where I want. I wonder where my torch is. Oh, I see it. All right, so we're gonna put this on. I'm gonna grab the torch in a second. Torch says, make sure I don't have any bubbles. I'll probably come back to it. And um, like I said, it's quick. It's quick coat, so it's gonna. It'll be. This will be done. I can mess with it again in just a few hours. Um, but I'm gonna come back in maybe five minutes or less and double check my whole bubble status make sure nothing else kind of rose to the top um my epoxy didn't travel away from any areas which it shouldn't usually only does that if there's some type of like oils or you know something's kind of contaminating the cup i went straight from this paint of setting them on the turners to dry so i don't think there was any time for anything to happen as far as getting stuff on it if my kids were home then might as well just do the whole cup over again All right, let me try to get some of these spots down here. Move quick so I can use it on the rest of my cups. Oh, I love it. It's, I feel like it's so pretty. You know what I think I wanna do? I think I want to get um, some patina paste and maybe do this over that. I tried it before. I'll have to grab it. Um, I tried it before. With the rose and white, and I liked it, but I felt like my white fell too flat. So it's been sitting on my shelf since, oh God, since a long, long time. All right. That's all good, that's spinning right. Um, this is, real quick, this is yellow and I was saying. Like I thought it would look cool, but I wonder how it would look if I did this whole wood look with that, like with all the texture in the background. Um, I gotta strip this, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this thing. Didn't work out the way I wanted. Um, so that's it, we're gonna let this go. I'm gonna get my decals ready and, um, oh, and I have to do this. And I'll be back with decals. Okay guys, so these are the two tumblers. Um, I wanted to do show you guys how I did decals and everything, but uh, I just I couldn't pull it together last night. So um, I'll just explain it to you really quick and, and what and how I did. This was cut to seven. The, um, well, 
uh, seven, sorry. This was cut to seven. Uh, this, the front decal size is 7.2. This is on a 30 ounce tumbler. This red vinyl, this red glitter vinyl from Cricut, I do not recommend it. I mean, if you see that it has the like shimmer to it um, when it's not on there, but under epoxy, it just goes metallic looking. Like I'm, I'm frustrated because I really wanted that to have a lot of glitter to it. It just doesn't. Um, I did use the transfer paper that has the grid to get it lined up right. Since we do have those lines, those straight lines that kind of go through with the wood, I didn't want my decal to be at all off because you'd really be able to see that. So like I said, this is the end result. Again, I'm really sorry I didn't get the rest of that done. I just, a ton gets away on the weekend and I couldn't, <laughs> you saw me yesterday. You heard me yesterday, I couldn't pull it together. So I hope this helps. Oh, sorry. This is, um, sure you can use printable, printable vinyl, but that is just a water slide. I went ahead and laid my decals first. I put the heart of that and trimmed it to, um, to really cut around that section because I'm just, I haven't quite figured out the uh, print and then cut with that. So that's a water slide. But other than that, that's it. Um, hope you guys like this video and you found it helpful.